Now I know when I put this head on with an old gasket that the pistons don't appear to touch the head. But when I put it on without the, any gasket, so straight on the block, it is hitting. Now it's and the way I determine that of course is just by turning the um, the crank. It's hitting on the two middle cylinders, that's the main hit, um, seems to be touching on the rear, I don't think it's touching on the front. So <clears throat> what I've done is to just concentrate on these two cylinders first. Now I've put some Prussian blue, or bearing blue, doesn't matter what you call it, on the top of the pistons and by turning the motor around I know where it's it's actually hitting. Now I've got a few bolts in here loose just to make sure that the, the head remains square to the block and um, as I say I put Prussian blue on tops of these pistons. I'll just take these off. I've actually been starting to die grind where it's hitting and I've still got a little bit more to do. able to see that on cylinder 3 just touching here and there and there's a little bit of Prussian blue there but <clears throat> I don't think it's hitting there yet I've actually put quite a lot of blue on top of the piston so it's it's sitting above the, the level of the piston in terms of where it's hitting here there's just a slight hit on about here. Now I've already started to die grind those. Um, so you can see that I've got a bit of grinding there. Um, I'll go back and I'll start to do these and I'll show you what I'm doing. So uh, I'll do that in a minute just to show you what I've got on the pistons. Just turn that. Okay, on those middle two, just need to look through the camera that you can see that. Should be able to see that. Okay, now I've gone a bit overboard with the Prussian blue. You don't need to cover the whole piston, of course, because of the, the design of the head. Uh, there's no way it's going to hit over where the spark plug is, but it is likely to hit if it's going to, in and around the the top, top of the, the head here, where it's a lot closer to the piston. So, hence I've just put it around like that. Now, you can't see it, but I can see where the blue has just been thinned out in a couple of places where it's just mildly touching. So. I've got to go and die grind a little bit more, but uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. It's actually in another another workshop. All right, back in the other workshop, just to start grinding. I'm using a high-speed die grinder, just a small cutting um, tip. Just clean off some of the remnants of the previous cut. Um, as I've said, I'm not taking lots off. Now, I guess there's two ways you can do this. You can see where it's hitting and then get really stuck into it and take a lump out. Um, that's one way. And um, I've chosen not to do that. I've chosen just to skim the areas where it's actually touching. And I mean skim. And then retest. Um, on the basis that 
I don't want to take more than I need to take off. So uh, this stage I've done a little more than take the, the rough casting out around here and the same there. Um, now there's a fair bit of depth in that um, uh, the cast finish there so I'm hoping I won't have to take much more than that. Now it's taken me hours to do this um, my way. Um, as I say I want to err on the side of taking less rather than more. Um, much more time consuming and, and certainly I get a lot more exercise because the two workshops are 50 metres apart so there's an added benefit. So I'll just show you what I'm doing and so it's going to be a little bit noisy but I'll, I'll adjust that in the um, in the editing. I also use this in case I accidentally touch the, uh, the head with the, the base of the grinder there and another thing I've, I've covered up most of the uh, water inlets just in case uh, some of the uh, flakes get uh, inside the head. All I'll take off. I'll now take it back to the uh, other workshop and put it on and test where it's hitting again. Bearing in mind that as you take it off uh, the high spots, it'll start to show other high spots in, in different areas. So, um, anyway, um, I'll go back and I'll actually. I won't show any more of the process, that's the process, just over and over again. I did take a little bit off this without the Prussian blue because I could see where it was touching with um, a little bit of carbon um, from the top of the piston that was hitting there, so I just removed some of the casting uh, finish. But anyway, these are the main areas where it's touching, on these forward areas, not so much on the rear. Um, a little bit on the rear there and there, but anyway, I'll keep going and uh, I'll eventually get it off. I've finished die grinding the head after many trips back and forth to the workshop. The um, areas I had to grind were cylinders two, three, and a little bit on four. The um, <coughs> What I found when I actually measured the depth of the, of the head was that the, the depth varies uh, between cylinder to cylinder. Um, mainly the cylinders 1 and 4 were close to each other, but um, 2 and 3 were much shallower. So hence I had to spend more time die grinding those two, two cylinders down. Now. The uh, little bits of alfoil on top of the cylinder heads here, cylinder, sorry, on top of the pistons, um, are there to do a final check on the, um, the gap I ended up with. Now to do that, I, um, 
I put a compressed gasket on and made a sausage out of the alfoil um, on each of the cylinders screwed the head on and then turned the, uh, the motor over and what they did of course was to compress the the alfoil and then I could use a vernier on those um, the gap I ended up with um, was 46 to 48 thou um, clearance with a compressed gasket so uh, I guess I'm happy with that at this stage it, um, it should be fine what I'm going to do now is to uh, put the head on and check the length of the, um, the head bolts of course I won't put a gasket on, I'll just put it straight on the block and make sure that the, um, the bolts don't have to be um, skimmed on the bottom it's, um, I mean it's possible but hopefully not if it is well I'll do that so that's what I'm about to do. Once I've done that, then I'll put uh, a new copper gasket on. Um, I use um, copper spray coat on the uh, on the gasket on both sides. I've found that works works well for me. <coughs> um, I've never had any problem with that. It's a little bit harder to get off um, if you have to change the gasket, but. Uh, I'd rather have that than the gasket file. So, so anyway, a little bit more work to do before I get the head on and uh, start reassembling uh, the front end here. Now all the head bolts were the right length, that wasn't a problem. Put the head back on uh, with the new gasket. Uh, put the stainless steel washers under the, the bolts and uh, I've torqued it up the um, this stage I've, I've torqued it up to 45 foot pound um, done most of it by hand um, just using a 7 inch spanner a ring spanner um, I torqued it up that way the way I've been taught years ago is to uh, <clears throat> basically just use your the strength in one arm to to gradually tighten it up until you couldn't move the uh, the bolt any further. I then checked that with my uh, torque wrench, and it turns out to be um, about 45 foot pounds, maybe a little bit more. Um, so what I've done initially torqued it up just with a the spanner, then checked it with the torque wrench. Everything I can get the torque wrench into is up to 45 foot pounds. And the two I can't, of course, right at the back there, I can't get my torque wrench in there. Um, I've just done those with the spanner. And um, that's why I've done them in the past and I've never had any problem. <clears throat> so, uh, head's back on. I've started to reassemble. Uh, radiator's back on. So, uh, that job's finished. And I need to proceed on with the other things I need to do.